really great to see you all here and be in a room full of creatives. How often does this happen, really, when we get to hang out with all the creatives? You know, we're all family here, just a bunch of hacks having a go for Jesus. And uh, it's so much fun doing it, isn't it? So um, I've got a little film that I want to show you at the end, which is about four minutes long, which means I've got 10 minutes to talk about storytelling in film. Holy moly, 10 minutes. So, um, strap yourselves in. I'm going to dump as much info as I can to you about storytelling in in film uh, this morning. Um, First thing I would say about storytelling in film is that it's not a whole lot different to storytelling in print um, or or in music. Storytelling is storytelling. And there are some, some basic kind of rules that we follow in storytelling to take people on the journey. And I, and I think that word journey is a really key point. Um, when we go to the movies to watch, watch a film, or when we dive into a book, we want to be trans, transported to a place where we feel immersed in some adventure or someone's story that we relate to. And so the key in storytelling is to take people on a journey. Um, And if I'm honest, if I can make people cry because of my films, then I'm really, really happy. Does that make sense to anybody here? (laughs) Um, Unless all of you are like me, in which case that's not very hard at all. I'm a bit of a sook. Um, So the goal is to take people on a journey. And I I want to just give you... um, four, four points, there are lots of different ways you can structure a story um, and lots of different names given to those things. I've given them the four C's this morning, um, really easy to remember. And the first is context. To start a journey, usually we don't want to just dive straight into the story of there's your, there's your main character and um, they're telling us their story already. We need to be put into the context. Where are we? Where does this journey begin? That's why so many films start with a drone shot. Why? It's a wide shot showing the rolling hills where the little farm and the prairie is situated and so forth. You start with a wide shot to give context. And then after giving some context and the viewers going, okay, all right, now... That's where I am, yes, okay. And then we introduce the character. So you start with context, next you go to character. And you'll develop who is the main protagonist in the story? Who is is the person that the story is going to follow in this journey? Whose head am I going to get into and live vicariously through and relate to the various aspects of their journey? And thirdly, there has to be some form of complication or a problem or a disaster or, or, or something that needs solving, okay? What's, what's the story about? Complication. And then lastly, the conclusion, right? Pretty simple. Context, character, complication... Ah, conclusion, right? We got that? Very simple structure. And uh, um, having, having said that, it's kind of like photography. There are certain rules in photography, the rule of thirds that we're going to probably hear about from, uh, from Laura when she talks about. R- rules, are, rules are there as a really good guide, but it's also pretty fun to break them. From time to time. Now, I showed you 45 seconds of a six minute video. Uh, Anyone got an idea where it was set? No, it's probably, yeah, probably a bit difficult to see. It's set in Korea, okay? And we started off with the context, um, some drone shots and so forth, and then we actually went straight to the complication. We didn't introduce you to the character, so I broke the rule there. But I did it understanding the rules. And understanding, we're going to mix things up a little bit and be a little bit surprising. And let me just tell you how that how that happened um, in in that particular story. Um, 
Uh, the way I film stories is a little bit infuriating to most film directors. Most film directors like to have the script, the plot, everything nailed down before any shooting starts, before cameras roll at all. So we are efficient with budget and so forth. But often the assignments I get sent on are, we don't even know what the story is, but well, they're sure there's a good story there. Go and find it. <laughs> Which is um, very scary for people that aren't creatives. Didn't scare you at all, probably, because, hey, we, we, we fly by the seat of our pants and know, heck, it's a little bit scary, but probably all work out in the end, right? And that's often how I do a lot of my film projects. I ended up going to Korea and there was a story about homelessness to film and how God's doing a great thing through the Adventist church in Seoul. And that was about it when I arrived there. And we had to find the story a little bit investigative journalism style, talking to lots of people and finding a thread that we weaved. And I, I said, you've got to take me to where there are a lot of homeless people. I've got to actually film people who are struggling and sleeping on the streets. And um, I remember they took me to this railway station and there was this kind of dead-end arm of the, of the subway there where the lights were kind of dimmed and there was a police officer standing there and in that arm there was all of these homeless people with their sleeping bags or blankets or newspapers sleeping on the ground. And I'm like, wow, look at this. And I, and I came around the corner like this and I'm wide-eyed and I've got a camera and I'm like, and they're like looking at me like, you know, and, and I wanted to be respectful, but the police officer came up and he said, no, 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 you cannot film here. So I'm like, this is a disaster. I've got to film here. So he, he ushered me away and I had to go and stand halfway down the corridor down here. And I saw this old guy uh, with his walking cane, dear old man, on his way to join the others with his walking stick and I put my camera, it was on a Ronin stabiliser, filmmakers know what I'm talking about and I put it on the ground and I sat down and I kind of acted like I wasn't filming and I threw the lens into wide and I pressed record and I'm just uh, acting like I'm not filming at all and this dude just walked straight in front of the camera, I'm like yes that's awesome. <laughs> You couldn't plan that stuff, right? Sometimes you just got to go with the flow. Um, Kyle Portbury, who I, whom I regard as probably the best Adventist filmmaker in the world, and he's an Aussie, yay. Come home, Kyle. Um, he said to me once, there's the story that you plan to shoot, then there's the story that you actually shoot, and then there's the story that you actually edit when you get home. And in that crazy kind of mix, the spirit speaks to you when you're, when you're making films for God and he helps you with that creative process and, 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 and in the end what you have that comes out is, is often very different to what you thought it was going to look like but somehow God speaks through that. Um, I, did a, I did a storytelling workshop once with the master storyteller Dick Dirksen. Anyone know that guy? And one thing that I've never forgotten is he said, if you want people to get into the story that you're telling, try to engage all of the senses that you can. If you're describing a scene in a room, talk about the smell of the baking bread that's coming out of the kitchen. Talk about the, the crickets that are, that are, that are calling, because it's night time, you know, um, Talk about the wrinkles on the old man's hand as he's folding his hands in his lap. Talk about the little things because they will help draw people into a story in a way that will be engaging uh, to them and help them empathise with what is happening in the story, taking them on the journey. Another point that I would say would be take your time. Most people are really uncomfortable in front of a camera in the Western world. 
Don't like being in front of... Anyone here love being in front of camera? There's probably one or two, wonderful. Usually kids, yes. And you know what happens? By the time you get sort of later high school and something changes, you start to believe the lies, most people do, that we're not beautiful. And so every single day that I go on a, on a shoot, I hear over and over again, I'm not... I hope you're good at Photoshop. I don't take good photos. I hope I didn't break your camera. So people are not comfortable in front of a camera. So what that does to us as filmmakers is usually we're not comfortable. If they're not comfortable, we're not comfortable. And we're just kind of faking it anyway. Hopefully no one notices. So we tend to rush things. So let me just say, slow down. Take your time. Think about it. Think about every shot. How can it be better? Is there a different angle that might make the shot look better? And um, <laughs> the last thing I'll say is just about how we, how we kind of edit. I've got this old school process of where I'll, I'll get home with all the footage and uh, interviews and so forth, and, I, and I'll actually type out the interviews word for word, often, and then print them onto paper, I know, really old school. And then I'll get a pair of scissors, and I'll cut this interview up into the difference. You know, they said this about, oh, and then, and then they said that about their journey. And I'll, and I'll get these little pieces of paper, because <laughs> filmmaking does your head in. It's, it's so immense. Get this whole, it could be this big, but what you really want is to boil it down to this, right? And that takes a lot of brain power, more than I've got. So I've got to print it all out and I put it on, the, on a table. And like the old school uh, slide tables with the Kodachrome 64, I used to make these slide shows and I'd have all these slides on the table and I'd start going like this until it started to make sense. Oh, there's, oh yeah, it could go, oh, and you end up with a story that weaves its way through. And so that's literally what I'll do with all of these different pieces of script. And my editor's hating me right now because um, I've done that about four different times now and he's now starting on the fifth complete re-edit of this current project we're doing on because they're not just working. So our time's out, but um, hopefully uh, if you want to have a look at a, a film on Vimeo that kind of, kind of follows that journey of context, character, complexity, conclusion, um, go to our Vimeo page, Tolos Creative. Look at the um, uh, story about India. I think it's called um, Believing in Hope again. Right, God bless you, and we'll talk a little bit more later on.